I had enough speaking by the men. <laughs> John, sit there. Do you realize that? Four male panelists and then the two of you on the phone. What, what's wrong with that picture? I know. It's very wrong. <laughs> and, and I want to, before, and actually before we go into the Q&A, since I didn't have a, a large introductory remarks, I want to tell you why. I run the Hispanic Federation out of New York. We're a regional organization up in um, the Northeast, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania. And then I also currently chair the National uh, Hispanic Leadership Agenda, uh, which is a coalition of, of over 30 uh, Latino national organizations that are focused on public policy and federal affairs out of Washington, D.C., um, and then Rafael Fantausi, NPRC, and the other uh, vice chair of NLCCC are members of the agenda, but we also work together on this issue. For me, it's very basic, and it's the three key points that I mentioned to you before. It's really about at what point will we introduce to the Hispanic community, to the Latino community, sustainable practices. So there's work happening throughout the country where we're focused on what we're calling green light districts, which is how do you get Latinos focused on energy, water conservation, green practices overall, which is also the recycling, the use of materials, green cleaning which is important when you have a community, because you have a double whammy. Um, uh, Javier mentioned about the asthma. Well, the problem is that you have a lot of Latinos that live in these areas, and we are uh, susceptible to high asthma, so we don't send our kids out to play, so now we're obese. So we have obese, asthmatic children, um, because so many of us live in areas that are subject to um, high levels of pollution, and we have a lot of environmental justice issues in our community. So it's about introducing the sustainable practices to the Latino community. Then when you talk about the economy, you think about, well, the gentlemen here were focused a lot around renewable energy, but we have a lot of people, and also agriculture, we have a lot of people that are working in construction and are also doing maintenance. And those are areas that are booming where, you know, in the more bourgeoisie, you know, high-end places, it's like, well, you can you build me a green house, or can you build a green apartment building, or can you do, even, even in federal programs now, they're, still, they're talking about creating senior citizens' housing or public housing that's green. Well, you can't compete and you can't put in these bids as small businesses <coughs> if you don't know what it means to be green. So, for example, and I'm going to mention this, we have a, a, a building that the Federation is housed in, which is a green building. It took a lot. It was about looking at green construction. So what did it mean? It meant that we were looking at the lighting, we were looking at the water, we were looking at the energy. So we have a water cooler. It was our painting, so we were low VOC. It was how we laid down the subflooring and the carpeting, so it was low chemical. Um, in addition to the lighting and people saying, okay, so you're energy efficient, it means it means that the lights go off every 15 minutes, so I have to ask people if they're alive or they're dead. But it also means that when we laid out our space, the lights, we have no walls where we didn't need to have permanent construction where you couldn't let outside light come in. It means that my office, anybody can see me doing anything, including like combing my hair or you know doing whatever I have to do, adjusting my dress, because I wanted to maximize the amount of daylighting. It also means that from an energy perspective, our entire floor is zoned. So we have four people who occupy that space, and when they're not in their spaces, they can shut down their electrical and their gas and their heat, every, all the energy sources that come in, and we can still be working, which happens on holidays when they all take the day off and we're still there, and you're not firing up the entire building. Um, so I'm saying is I want to say it has all a lot of different components. It's also the way we recycle. So all our paper goes out, and those are there are companies that do this that pick up all our recyclables. People that pick up the aluminum and the and the glass and the plastic and as well as the paper. Um, and then you also when you think about sort of you know some of the other things, green manufacturing, right? So people are now looking at the cabinetry and the furniture. There's green clothing, clothing. You know, and whether or not you're using cotton and you're losing less chemicals and dyes. The Latino community and all communities have to understand what that means because maybe you're right. Right now we're in the training phase. And training works because we're in a bad economy. So if there are not jobs, you should be training and educating people. 
because it's a way of keeping people engaged, informed, and, away, and the wave of the future around green jobs. But at some point, there will be jobs. And Latinos and, and people in rural areas and urban areas and low-income people cannot be kept out of these industries because, you know, I tell people all the time, we could not seize on Silicon Valley, and we certainly didn't own the railroads, and we didn't own banking. We should have green jobs. <laughs> And there are jobs that we can have. Um, so, you know, I just want to uh, highlight that because I think it's, it's critically important. And then obviously the third point was, you know, just understanding also, right? So you understand what you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis, but understanding the impact on the world. And on a final note, because I happen to see that NCLR has a lot of signs up here, one of the things that concerns me about telling people not to participate in the census, which is wrong and dangerous, is... You know, this goes back to the environment and the use of resources. Why in this country would we not want to know how much water we need, how much fuel we need, how much food we need going into 2050, 2100, you know, 2100, whatever, you know, century or date we're talking about. It's irresponsible when you look in Washington, D.C., for people to say around, and this is, I'm not trying to politicize this, but I do have to say this around the undocumented. We need to know how many people live in this country because we only have a certain number of natural resources and we need to know what we need to grow here and what we need to bring in. And so that's the importance of the census and population as it relates to these resources. So on that note, thank you gentlemen. I took my three minutes and I would love to open it up to um, Q&A.